Today's teens are completely immersed in technology. While the internet, cell phones, and television provide many benefits, they can also be unhealthy and dangerous. A recent study found the average 8 to 18 year old spends more than seven and a half hours a day, seven days a week using media. That's over 53 hours a week, more time than adults spend at their full-time jobs. Teens have access to a lot of technology and it's fun to learn on the computer, but they need to police themselves on how much time they spend in front of those things. They do need to be active and stay active and go outside and take a break from that. I can think of some problems that technology can cause with physical health, but also technology could cause some problems with mental health. And the other problem we're faced is that we don't know what some of the effects will be 5, 10, 20 years from now. So we're sort of learning as we go along. The main message is too much of anything can be unhealthy. The effects on academic performance must be looked at as well. 50% of teens use some type of media while doing homework. This multitasking damages productivity of the quality of work. Sometimes she has the TV on when she's doing homework and sometimes she's texting when she's doing homework and I'm not sure but I can't imagine that that helps. Teens with heavy media use also report getting lower grades. About half of these teens say they usually get C's or lower on their report cards. I think my child's um, academics suffer because of the time she spends uh, on the internet and texting her friends. Uh, I think she doesn't really take the time to do her homework and whatnot the way she should be doing. Well, I recently just deleted my Facebook and um, I got to where I would just you know, kill some time on Facebook instead of doing homework. Another issue is that the quickness of writing and the abbreviations teens use for chatting are leading to diminished spelling and writing skills. I've noticed some issues with writing every year at the beginning of the year whenever I go over essay writing I make sure that I do a lesson on audience and making sure that you understand that when you're writing an essay that you don't use the same language that you use when you're texting. The final thing we must look at is one of the most deadly. Using cell phones while driving is a huge problem today. Teens say texting is the number one driving distraction. This type of distraction kills over 6,000 Americans each year. And listen to this startling fact. For every six seconds of drive time, texting takes 4.6 of the seconds away. That's 4.6 seconds a teen's driver's eyes are off the road. Maybe this explains why teen drivers are four times more likely than adults to get into a car crash while using a cell phone. A study by the University of Utah has shown that a person who's talking on the cell phone is just as dangerous on the road as a person who is legally drunk. And then a person who is texting goes up from there. So the more that your attention is captured by what you're doing on the cell phone, the more likely it is that you're going to cause an accident that either hurts you or somebody else or even results in death. Technology can be an amazing thing. There are wonderful educational programs on TV and today's teens can be creative and productive producing their own media. Social sites can help teens who are lonely get social interaction during adolescence. Now with all this technology, a lot of people who are young are finding that they can share their opinions. If they were shy, they can actually have these conversations and that, I think, can be very helpful. These sites also help families stay in touch over long distances and give teens something they feel they don't have a lot of, control. Parents are the key to helping teens handle technology. By setting limits and rules and talking about what is seen and heard, today's teens can learn the benefits of technology without falling victim to the many dangers. Sarah Lauren Brown, TSC News. Last Thursday, a very special cut-a-thon was held at Michael Rose Hair Designs in Lakeland. This event was called Hair for Hope. Donors cut at least eight inches of their hair for Pantene Beautiful Lengths. I donated my hair today because I know a lot of people who have gone through treatment for cancer and that's just a personal experience for me, um, having witnessed what, what it's like to go through that treatment, not personally, but with friends and family. And I wanted to be able to do something and growing my hair was a very easy and painless way to, to do something nice. So that's why I did that. A lot of people don't know, but 12 years ago, I actually shaved my head for a little girl that had alopecia um, when I was Miss Virginia USA. So this cause means something to me because I know what it means to give a piece of yourself to somebody else and, and to watch it grow and to watch that person grow. TSC News anchor Haley Fletcher donated eight inches of her hair to Pantene Beautiful Links, which is a charity that makes wigs and gives them free to American Cancer Society wig banks nationwide. 
I cut my hair today because my aunt has breast cancer and I just lost my grandpa to cancer, so I wanted to help. I've known Michael for four years through pageantry. I lost my mom to breast cancer three years ago yesterday. And it's very important, you know, it's bad enough they lose their dignity when they have breast cancer and they have to lose their hair. And my mom had to go through the wig process. So in order, it makes me feel good to come out and sponsor an event like this because I've lived it. I saw my, it made my mom feel beautiful. You know, when you have to shave your head, it's devastating for a woman. So if we provide the hair and make them beautiful on the outside, they feel beautiful on the inside. There are 79 ponytails donated at this year's event. Around 300 people attended last year's Hair for Hope, while this year's event drew over 500 people. The Hair for Hope Cut-a-thon was a huge success. Donors left the salon knowing that they were giving a special gift to women undergoing cancer treatment. Cambriello, TSC News. TSC reporter Richie Sloan is here with us today. How's it going, Richie? Hey guys, I'm here at PigFest and I've done a lot of research. It looks like you have some of that research all over your face. Oops, you caught me. But yeah, I do have a lot of information for you. We can't wait to see what you found out. Take it away, Richie. An annual tradition was born in 1997 when PigFest was first held here in Lakeland. Then, in 2004, there was a kids' barbecue contest added, and in 2008, officials added Friday night festivities. But this year at Big Fest, there's something for everyone. There's NASCAR simulators, live music, and even a kids' playground sponsored by Legoland. But the star of the show is the barbecue, and Big Fest has been recognized as one of the biggest barbecue events in the U.S. Teams come from all over the country to compete in four categories, chicken, pork, brisket, and ribs. Well, it's my first time here, so uh, I'm very impressed. We have lots and lots of customers out here. And uh, since we're a new company, we only New restaurant, I would say we're a year and a half old, so we're trying to get our name out there, and Pig Fest is, has been one of those outlets that we have to spread our name. While well, some are experiencing their first Pig Fest, Pink Butts Barbecue is back again this year, cooking delicious food for a very special cause. Uh, we got into the Pig Fest a couple years ago. We put together a cancer cooking barbecue team. Our team is composed of many cancer survivors. And uh, this is our second year out here doing the Pig Fest, and it's been, been a great experience. And we've brought in a lot of great volunteers, family members, a lot of cancer survivors, and it's all for a good cause. All of our dollars are donated back to cancer research. Pig Fest is a fun time for the young and the young at heart. It's a chance to try different food. I love barbecue, and there's a lot of different things to see, and there's a lot of games and things to do. It's just a good opportunity to come out and have a good time. And what do the little ones like best about Pig Fest? The game and the funnel cake. Over the past 14 years, Pig Fest has helped raise over half a million dollars for local charities. And this year, the organizers have teamed up with the Junior League of Greater Lakeland to try and donate even more for those in need in our community. Richie Sloan, TSC News. The seventh annual Cardboard Boat Challenge was put on by Lakes Education Action Drive in partnership with Lakeland's Clean and Beautiful, Lakeland's Vision Lakes Alliance, and the City of Lakeland. This event was a great opportunity for everyone to have fun while enjoying the view of one of our beautiful lakes. The challenge was to design, construct, and race a boat entirely made of cardboard around a marked course in Lake Hollingsworth. We uh, got the dimensions down and uh, we built the boat the first year and for the last three years in a row we've come in first place. Well, I can't give out any secrets on how we put the boat together, but let's just say we used almost all the materials that we had and we used all the duct tape. Well, our boat is called the Compost Heap, and uh, this whole event is, you know, bringing green awareness and just, you know, uh, yeah, go to green. conserving our lakes and not polluting them and our whole environment altogether is the main goal of today. Right. And um, we built this, it took uh, two days to build it, or two nights to build it, and then one uh, night to decorate it. And we're pretty sure we're gonna be the first ones to sink. We are working on getting the Titanic Award, which yes. is the sinking award, obviously. We're very excited. Yeah. <laughs> I learned that teamwork pays off, and that we can crush the other team. My favorite part was when we won and beat everyone else. What I learned from a building the boat is uh, 
that uh, you can construct something uh, out of just simple materials like cardboard and duct tape. The biggest thing that we've learned is that it doesn't really matter whether you sink or float or win, it's just about having fun and uh, getting wet. We're here today for the environmental education event at the Boatyard Challenge to teach young kids about stormwater and what it is, a watershed, and about stormwater and how to prevent the pollution that happens when people put it into our lakes and our cities and our streams. Race teams had a great time at this event that also educated those in attendance about our area lakes and water resources. Sarah Lauren Brown, TSC News. Hello Lake Gibson, I'm here in downtown Lakeland where pumpkins are checking in for surgery. That's right, the third annual Dr. Scissorhands exhibition is backed by popular demand. As Halloween approaches each year, Lakeland's finest doctors make their way here to Kentucky Avenue to operate on the pumpkins, creating the best jack-o'-lanterns out there. After completion, they are auctioned off and all proceeds benefit the volunteers in service to the elderly. We serve those who are 65 and older, who live in Lakeland, Bartow, Mulberry, and Fort Meade, so a good portion of our community. Things that you and I tend to take for granted are things that our elderly citizens in Polk County really need sometimes. It's a great community uh, service organization that helps benefit the elderly, the shut-ins, those who need additional assistance. And uh, it's kind of fun. It's fun doing pumpkin carving, and uh, it's nice that after we get done carving that they get auctioned off and uh, makes money for Visti. Also adding to the fun, there was a costume contest presented by Hall Communications. This is our fifth year to be doing this, and uh, it was an idea of Janet Tucker, one of our board members, and uh, we've invited all the surgeons in town to come and carve pumpkins, and then we auction them off for charity. It's very successful. We seem to be having a, a, a hit with it. These talented doctors unselfishly gave their time and talent to help raise money for Visti. We'll use all donations to help those in need in our community. Richie Sloan, TSC News. The first Lakeland Ledger was printed in 1924. It was one of the 10 newspapers at the time. The Lakeland Ledger did not get its name until 1941. Before then, it was known as the Star-Telegram. Cal's Communication Incorporated bought the Star-Telegram and renamed it the Ledger. Our local newspaper went through an additional change April 30, 1979, when it first appeared as a morning newspaper. Before then, it was an evening newspaper. My job title is Night and Online Sports Coordinator. And that's actually a combination of two jobs rolled into one. Part of the job is to oversee the nightly production of the sports section of the paper. And the other part of the job is to manage our web pages online and to integrate the two together so that we make sure what we have in the paper is online as, as well as developing additional content for our website and, trying, and creating projects that will help us grow our website. I covered all issues concerning education. Matter of fact, your peers may see me from time to time on your campus covering certain educational issues. I'm also responsible for covering the school board meetings and whatever policy issues come out of Bartow from the district office. My job on the staff is I oversee and cover all of the high schools in Polk County. We have 23 high schools in Polk County that we cover from Lake Gibson to Lakeland all the way down to Frostproof and Lake Wales. And it's a big job and we also, in addition to writing stories and getting things in the paper, have our new website, polkpreps.com, which I help oversee and, and get all the content on there. So there's quite a bunch of different things that we, we get to do for high school sports in Polk County. The best thing I like about my job is uh, developing story ideas when stories break and uh, getting the reporters to find out everything they can and to uh, bring a, bring a well-written, competent story that uh, that the readers are going to enjoy. I really like most uh, with my job going out and interacting with everyone in the county, the coaches, the athletes, parents, fans. It's a lot of fun to go around the county and meet with everybody and I think like everyone else in the sports department I just like sports so be able to go on Friday nights and watch football games and then talk to players and write a story about it. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of work but it's a lot of fun too if, if you like sports. I think that newspapers are still a good source of information because we help you with your daily lives, from how much you're going to pay in property taxes to what your elected officials are doing. It's very important that all of us stay on top of current events. We have standards and we have ethics uh, guidelines that we have to follow. 
we don't report just anything. We verify facts. Um, whereas if you read, you know, not just a, if you read any website, any blog, um, you don't know necessarily where they got that information. And a lot of those blogs depend on newspapers to get the news that they repost on their blogs. We're just able to do so much more. Uh, we're able to go into far more depth than you'll find on uh, TV, on the, uh, on the radio. Uh, I think that's why readers continue to read the paper, is depth. During the week, the ledger only costs 50 cents, and on Sundays, it's $1.25. Special thanks to the staff for letting us film behind the scenes. Fantasia Hollis reporting for TSC News. What if you could design an All About Me t-shirt? What would you put on it? Your favorite food? What about your pet's name? Here at LG, students express themselves through socks, jewelry, or shoes. But Ms. Horn's class took a different route and decided to design All About Me tees that show things that they like to do or things they were interested in. I came up with the idea because I saw it on a poster and I thought, well, we can't really do it on a poster because it's kind of flimsy. So I thought, well, why not do t-shirts? So that's where we got this from the All About Me tee. And so the kids, they brought in t-shirts and basically we just kind of went from there. I think they learned um, a lot about themselves and um, I think they learned different kind of just to think about different things and to be able to do an art project a different type of way. Because usually we would have used um, construction paper, but this time we used t-shirts. So I think it really just kind of got their minds thinking of how to make their t-shirt a little bit different from everyone else's. Um, I guess my favorite thing is that it's also colorful. Like all of the t-shirts, are they all have their own little unique twist to it. And um, so I think that's what I like the best. And every t-shirt is actually all about what the students are and what they like and their activities and things about them and their family. So I think that's what I like the best. Color and white and I like coloring and drawing because it makes me think of art. Now that Miss Horn's class have made all about me tees, I think it's time for you to make a shirt of your own. Cambria Love, TSC News. Haley Gibson, I'm here at the 29th Annual Snowfest held here at the Lake Mirror Complex. Every year this event is made to give the people of Florida a little bit of snow in downtown Lakeland. But every year, people come here bundled up like Eskimos, all cozy and warm. But this year, I've joined the Polar Bear Club, and I'm going to show you that I'm going to go on there in nothing but a t-shirt and shorts. The city leaders brought, thought it would be a great opportunity to, for the children of Florida and Central Florida to actually see snow, you know, because it doesn't snow here ever. So uh, they uh, started but it was down in Munn Park way back when it first started and they would do it out there in the street, big pile of ice out there in the street and the kids would have a good time and we, over the years it's gotten bigger and larger. We've uh, expanded so now we've got the snow slide and the snow mountain and everything and the kids just eat it up man, they, they really enjoy it. Snowfest is incredible this year, if you just look, glance, we've got thousands of kids and parents running around, eating, drinking, sliding in snow, going on the mountain, falling, tripping, throwing snowballs at people, having a good time. I was surprised by all the activities that they have for all the kids and a lot of stuff for the adults to do also. We're very excited for the turnout. It's been awesome because we were able to have the Sunflower Preschool Playground opening and Snowfest and just being able to offer this to the community is such a great experience. Snow slide started at 5.30 this morning, blowing snow all the way down the hill. We had six beautiful swans going down the hill with the kids, inflatables are going great. Then all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. We went from six to two, one's lost a wing. And if you look around behind you, there's the Swan Cemetery for the inflatable snow slide. It's so cold. I'm out of here. Richie Sloan to the to the C T S C N N News. <laughs> What's it like backstage, Cambria? It's a lot of fun hanging out with tonight's acts, but I did manage to get some work done while I'm here. Don't keep us waiting any longer. Here's Cambria with our top story. Magic is a performance art that entertains by creating impossible feats using natural means. First recorded by a Roman philosopher and writer named Silica. Magic was then performed in open air markets in Rome. The performers at Wizards Magic Theater in Cassini specialized in prestidigitation or sleight of hand. This form of magic developed at the beginning of the 20th century, about the same time Harry Houdini was performing his astounding acts. 
Well, I actually uh, came up with the idea when I was performing at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. In every room, there's a different magician performing in. So there's different size rooms, different styles of magic. And I was working the parlor, which is a small 80-seat theater. And I thought, boy, it'd be really cool to have just one room this size to have magic in. My favorite thing about doing close-up magic is um, that I, it's in the palms of your hands. Um, very few people get an opportunity to actually see magic really close up. I mean, most people see it on TV. So all they think is um, that it's a, a CG effect or, or some sort of camera trick. But when you see it in your hands, that's real magic. It's really, really good to see and meet these people who have been inspirations for me and other magicians. And uh, we get to see them work up close. We get to talk to them after. We get some of their insights when they give lectures. It's, uh, it's, it's really good to see that. He took a $20 bill. Squunched it up real small, he pulled it out and it was a hundred dollar bill. I wanted to give him every 20 I had in my pocket to make them hundreds. And only had one, but I wanted to do it. That's the trick I want to learn. The Wizards Magic Theater opens its doors every Monday at 6. The show begins at 7. Tickets for this all-ages show are only $10. You can call 863-307-9400 or email magic at ij.net to reserve your seats. Book your seats early because they only have 50 seats available. Cambria Low, TSC News. Go-karts were first created by Art Ingalls in the 1950s in California and was no more than a riding lawnmower. During this time, members of the Air Force would use them to pass the time. Go-karts are related to open wheel racing such as IndyCar and Formula One. And most professional drivers such as Kyle Petty, Zara Waltrip, Tony Stewart, and many others got their racing career started by racing go-karts. So, what is a go-kart, you may ask? A go-kart is made up of a transmission, four tires, motor, chassis, and a seat, and many other small parts. Some go-karts can reach a speed of 90 miles per hour. Anyone can race a go-kart, and each age group has their own class name. If you're 9 to 11, you'd race in purple. 11 to 12, you'd race in blue. 12 to 15 is gold, and 15 and up is unrestricted. Go-karting is a fun but dangerous sport and requires lots of safety gear, such as a dot approved helmet, a neck brace, gloves, and some sort of fireproof suit. Maybe you should give go-karting a try. Aaron Ramsey, TSD News.